So Kaspersky went adios overnight. They uninstalled themselves, right? And not only did they uninstall themselves, they installed a different antivirus, which is kind of unheard of. It's very different. And there's a lot of reason behind this, but it's just kind of weird and different from what I would have expected them to do. So let's talk about it. Today, we're facing an unprecedented array of data breaches, hacking attempts, and surges in digital crime. Why is there such a widespread amount and how little is noticed in our everyday lives? Malware, dark sites, brute forcing, zero days, script kitties, and nation state hackers are all on the rise. Learn more about the threats we face and gain a bit more knowledge than yesterday. Hey everyone, another episode of Exploit Brokers is coming to you now. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Exploit Brokers. I'm Lauro, your host. If you can please do me a favor, hit the like, subscribe, and bell notification icons if you're on YouTube. Please review and subscribe or follow to us if you're on a podcast platform like Spotify or Apple Podcast. It would mean the world to me because it helps us get our message out to as many people as possible. With that said, let's jump in. Hey guys, so in this Mashable article titled Kaspersky Antivirus Software Uninstalls Itself, installs different companies' cybersecurity program. It's ironic considering cybersecurity software usually prevents unauthorized changes to your computer. That's the subline, but I totally 100% agree with it, right? It's, you expect antivirus to protect stuff from getting installed on your computer, not just throwing itself out the window and installing some other, uh, some other company's antivirus, right? Just kind of different. So jumping into the article, Cybersecurity firm Kaspersky has uninstalled its popular antivirus software from US users' computers, automatically replacing it with a completely different program from a completely different company, Ultra AV. Kaspersky customers are not happy. Now, I don't know anything about Ultra AV. I'm assuming, you know, I haven't heard anything negative necessarily either, but I just don't keep up with them. And I don't see necessarily the negative about them being installed. Granted, it's kind of the context of this, right? So rolled out in an update on September 19th, Kaspersky's unilateral swapping of users to Ultra AV quickly garnered many confused and upset reactions online. Numerous people took to social media to complain about Ultra AV being automatically installed in their computer without their consent, as well as express dissatisfaction at how the transition was handled. Some even voiced suspicion regarding the unfamiliar antivirus software speculating that it was malware and demanding to know how to uninstall it. So as far as I know, Ultra AV is not malware. For those of you who may be listening who were affected by Kaspersky, it is another, as far as I know, legitimate antivirus company. I don't know about how good or not good they are. I haven't messed with them, so I can't speak to their efficacy, but they are, from what I understand, a legitimate company. Now, I can understand why a lot of people would kind of be peeved at this or be upset at this because, okay, Say Kaspersky had no choice, which it seems like they don't have a choice, right? One thing is uninstalling themselves and giving the users the option to install something else. But here, just uninstalling and installing something else is kind of the interesting part because ideally, the user should be able to choose whether they had Ultra AV installed or not. Yes, I understand that they wanted to continue and prevent a lapse of security, right? But that should kind of be up to the user. If you paid for Kaspersky, then you were quote unquote entitled, uh, right? You've paid for however amount of time of security. Well, you don't necessarily have that agreement with Ultra AV. Granted, Kaspersky sold off the licensing to Ultra AV, but considering this is a product that you paid for, then you should have the option whether you just want Ultra AV to continue or you don't want it installed or maybe even a refund or something like that. But here, that's not what Kaspersky did. And that's what a lot of people are kind of upset about. If we keep reading, Kaspersky had already announced plans to pull out of the US early this year after the Russian cybersecurity company was banned from continuing to operate in the country. As such, Kaspersky informed US customers at the beginning of the month that they would still receive cybersecurity protection under their paid subscription, these services would now be provided by its US-based partner, Ultra AV. In the coming days, you'll be receiving communications from Ultra AV with instructions on how to activate your new account, wrote Kaspersky in the messages that began rolling out on September 5th. We're confident that you'll enjoy the enhanced protection and features Ultra AV offers. So here, you could kind of see it one of two ways. 
they're implying they're going to install it. But I'm also reading this as like, hey, we're going to give you the option to go with them. We're confident that you'll like them as much as you liked us. Now, in a statement to Mashable, uh, I'm continuing. In a statement to Mashable, Ultra AV's parent company's Pango Group said that all Kaspersky users with valid email addresses received direct communications and all users had access to transition notifications in app on, Kas on my Kaspersky account pages and via Kaspersky Labs web pages. Yes, they were notified, but I'm kind of going back to the main point in this, which is just because they were notified doesn't necessarily mean they're notified this other thing was going to get installed. They were, from what it seems, notified that, hey, Kaspersky has to go. We're, they're leaving and they're getting banned and that's, that's going to happen. But I don't, I haven't necessarily seen. So if some of you have seen, please leave a comment or, you know, reach out and let me know. But I don't think I've seen anyone actually say that they were notified that Ultra AV was going to get auto installed as much as they were just going to have the offerings from Ultra AV as a replacement. Now, granted, you could kind of see that as, oh, it'll be auto installed, but I kind of don't see it that way. Kaspersky and Ultra AV work closely to ensure customers would maintain the standards of security and privacy users have come to expect from their service, read the statement. This update ensured that users would not experience a gap in the protection upon Kaspersky's exit from the market. So right there, right there is I think where some of the confusion would lie. Because someone would read that and think, oh, they're just going to get replaced on my machine. And someone else is going to read that and be like, okay, I'm going to have the option to continue forward. And it doesn't actually seem like anyone was given the option to not have Ultra AV installed, which is where I guess the main part that I have a concern with, if you will, because you don't know how well you like or don't like Ultra AV or any other software for that matter. So when you install something, you're kind of agreeing to have this thing on it. And you have a lot of softwares that they'll be through terms of service or other things, they'll install extra software in the back end that you may or may not want. And that's kind of where I have a problem with this because you wanted Kaspersky. You didn't necessarily want Ultra AV. And because you didn't necessarily want Ultra AV, you should be given the option to not have Ultra AV be auto installed, at least the way I see it. Now, Ultra AV did reply. Uh, they were they were replying to the users. Ultra AV is a mature technology developed and improved for more than 20 years. Pango Group told Mashable, it incorporates the latest threat intelligence and leverages advanced techniques, including AI and sophisticated heuristics to detect malware. With Ultra AV, users will receive comparable protections to those they had with Kaspersky at the same pricing. Even so, uh, so this is still within the article, but no longer a quote from Ultra AV. Even so, Ultra AV isn't a perfect one-to-one -one substitution for Kaspersky. Ultra AV does have a few added features that Kaspersky didn't offer, such as notifying you when your social security number is used, monitoring high-risk transactions, such as password resets, and up to 1 million in identity theft insurance. However, unlike Kaspersky, Ultra AV does not provide webcam or online payment protection, features many customers will no doubt miss. So they have a a uh, infographic on the website, right? So real-time antivirus protection, both are comparable, application control, malware and ransomware protection, firewall, USB drive protection, VPN, password manager, identity theft protection, real-time authentication alerts, high-risk transaction and monitoring. Oh, so actually, let me pull that back. Real-time authentication alerts is offered by Ultra AV. However, it is not offered by Kaspersky. High-risk transaction monitoring is offered by Ultra AV, is not offered by Kaspersky and the identity theft insurance is offered by Ultra AV, but not by Kaspersky. So where they do actually have a lineup is the antivirus protection, the malware and ransomware protection, application control, firewall, USB drive protection, VPN, password manager, and identity theft protection. But that's where the similarities end. And something Kaspersky had that Ultra AV doesn't is the webcam protection and online payment protection. The article even starts to go and outline why is Kaspersky uninstalling antivirus from US computers? Well, there had been decisions by US government that said, hey, we don't want, uh, we don't necessarily want Kaspersky doing business in the States. So they were banned. And part of that ban doesn't necessarily have to do with, oh, well, we think Kaspersky is risky because Kaspersky has done X before. But they're saying that Kaspersky is a risk because of their ties to Russia. 
they are within an area that could be influenced or compromised by Russia because they are a Russian company. Kind of the same thing you're seeing with like TikTok and China, where they're saying that TikTok is a national security threat because they could be influenced or controlled by the Chinese government. This kind of goes in the same line. Um, and the article, which I've linked in the description, is essentially kind of arguing that to that extent, right? They're, they're pulling out quotes and Kaspersky has even said, hey, it's unconstitutional, but this is kind of where we're at. I am of one mind that I like to believe that people should have a choice. Granted, if the US government thinks, hey, we don't trust Kaspersky, they have their right to ban that from government computers. That is their right as a government from government computers. But to say that US citizens can't install Kaspersky and then forcing Kaspersky to leave the market, I can kind of see that both ways. I can see that from a national security perspective where if you install Kaspersky on machines that could potentially be linked to power plants or grid stations or critical infrastructure or could be used as a pivot into that kind of stuff, then that's a security threat that should be mitigated. I understand that. But for consumers, for normal everyday people who are not using it in a way that connects to grid or critical infrastructure, granted there could still be some loss of information there, but Kaspersky hasn't necessarily done anything negative before. Not to say they could never do anything negative in the future. All companies have the risk of being influenced. We even see companies where US companies are quote unquote for privacy, but then the government comes and requests logs or requests user information or stuff like that, right? Any government can easily overstep privacy for the sake of security. And that's what we're seeing more and more happen. And right now, as much as the as much as there's conflicts and everything else, we are kind of fighting a silent cyber war, whether we want to admit it or not. And part of that technically means that, hey, if you have ways to pivot into other countries' infrastructure, eventually there is that risk that a country will take advantage of that. And that's what the U.S. is trying to protect against. But I do kind of have issues with the way Kaspersky handled it. Randomly installing another, even though it's a partner, randomly installing another software is not necessarily what I think they should have done. But what's happened has happened and the users affected can choose to uninstall the antivirus and move on, right? It's a legitimate company. It's a legitimate software, but it would have been nice if they were given the option to install it, not install it, or maybe even get a refund. Um, now I feel for, Kasp for Kaspersky because this is not necessarily something they chose. They were forced to, but at the end of the day, it's just interesting to see how this kind of played out. Guys, I want to thank you for tuning in to another episode of Exploit Brokers, and I will see you in the next one.